Hey, stupid! Yes, you! Have you found yourself stranded on a desert island? Pretty thirsty, huh? Why don't you drink a beautiful Nuka-Cola? Nuka-Cola contains all of the essential attributes of liquid, now with fewer rads per serving. So what are you waiting for? Death? Dive into an ice-cold Nuka-Cola today. What if there was a place with all the soup of Nuka-Cola? The Wasteland and the Fallout series can be a wild and unforgiving place. You've had many adventures across this great post-apocalyptic nation, and there is no doubt you have encountered the radioactive wildlife that inhabits it. I am the storyteller, and in this series, I am going to take you closer to the nuclear-powered flora and fauna of the Fallout series than ever before. Diving deep into the folklore and daily lives of the magnificent creatures, plant life, and terrain that this post-war playground has to offer. So grab a Nuka-Cola and your best box of Fancy Lad snack cakes. This is the Wild Wasteland. Edna and I took care of that Deathclaw problem you had, stranger. You won't be seeing her poking around here anymore. Thanks, boss. That really helps out around here. She was picking off the damn Brahmin. Well, I hope you didn't lose too many. They serve quite a purpose. It is a shame to see them end up as Deathclaw Chow. Sure, they could serve a purpose if the damn things did anything. Lazy bastards stopped giving milk and only one of them will haul to the other settlement nearby anymore. The herd is probably just spooked from the Deathclaw. How about me and Edna tag along on the next run? Wow, okay. Maybe you can get them motivated. We need to make a run to Great Garden. Of course, you're welcome to tag along if these damn things will get moving. Well, there is nothing worse than a lazy Brahmin. You can really see how valuable they are when they aren't pulling their weight. You know, Brahmin and their pre-war ancestors have been providing the people around them with a useful service for centuries. Let me tell you, they looked a lot different before the war. Old holotapes from the pre-war show the Brahmin's ancestor, cattle, were a pretty standard sight before the bombs fell. They were generally raised for meat, hides, and milk. Bovines were an integral part of pre-war life, domesticated over 11,000 years ago. It is easy to see why Brahmin have stood the test of time so well. Reliable, resilient, and social. These magnificent creatures don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. The cows before the Great War had a few differences to the Brahmin we see now, most notably the head, with the bovines of the pre-war only having one head. Hard to imagine these beasts with only one head, but some Brahmin today will birth calves that are missing the extra head. On the inside, according to records, Pre-war cattle had half the stomachs of today's Brahmin as well. The ancient animals possessing four stomachs, while the Brahmin we find now has eight. Can you imagine, Edna? Yeah, what a freak show. So you're telling me that according to your old tapes, Brahmin used to have one head and be half as hungry? Yes, something like that. How does a critter grow an extra head? Pretty neat trick. I'm glad you asked. The war had a significant effect on a lot of the animals that called America home. After nuclear fire had engulfed the planet in 2077, many different beings had to learn how to survive. Some would adapt and mutate in strange ways. The Brahmin is one of the most extreme cases we see in the wasteland. It is pretty rare to see a two-headed animal. This is a result of the radiation caused by the Great War and a few decades of post-war breeding. We are pretty lucky they are so resilient, too. Brahmin act as the backbone for struggling human settlements across the wasteland. From coast to coast, the effect Brahmin have had on the wastes is pretty hard to miss, helping turn villages into cities with caravan runs and trading from what can be harvested from the animals. Even their droppings prove useful, many farmers using it for campfire fuel and fertilizer. Around 2241, a guy in New Reno even managed to use the fumes from their feces to make a helpful but addictive chem, Jet. 
Wait a minute, if some guy knew Reno, 2,900 miles from here, invented Jet 2241, 164 years after the Great War, how come we find so much Jet locked in containers from before the war, around the old vaults? Good point. It must be an oversight. Ramen meat is considered a delicacy among folks in the wasteland. Many people and tribes having their own perfect recipes. Some of the best I've had come out of the Mojave, but everybody has their preference. Their milk, on the other hand, that's a commodity these days. There are a lot of reports that it can cure radiation sickness, which just adds more value to these mutated bovines. Though even stranger stories have been told about big groups of Brahmin out in the wastes, seeming to speak actual words. Yes, Edna, real English words. It seems pretty impossible that these beasts would be able to talk. You never know, though. The wasteland is a big place. Hard to say what is out there. These days, it's more likely you will find Brahmin around settlements, grazing on grass or getting ready for the next job. Some are kept in groups to encourage safe breeding in colonies, though the bulls are kept out of sight when not needed. Much like their female counterparts, a mutation from the Great War left them with a little extra. While Brahmin udders have grown significantly since the war, Brahmin bulls have doubled their manpower, so to speak. Bulls carry four testicles, which makes breeding a breeze, but housing them difficult. Thanks to zoos and attractions like Nuka World, we can see that the mutations that affect the common Brahmin seem to stem out to other species of bovids. African Cape buffaloes brought here have become known as Brahmaluf, with smoother hides and longer horns coming from their ancestors. This group of cattle looks a bit more healthy than their counterparts. Much like traditional Brahmin, Brahmaluf have been used as pack animals with great success along with their relatives found in the area. The Brahmaluf shorthorn, which mutated from the American bison, hosts a lighter skin tone and offers the same sturdy companionship as any of the other bovines that call the wasteland home. Perhaps the most impressive of the group, the Brahmaluf longhorn, is quite the sight. Mutating from Asian water buffaloes in the area, they don't differ much from the others. Visually, they are pretty impressive. Massive bovines with horns two times the size of your arm. You don't want to find yourself on the receiving end of those bad boys. Well, thanks for the company, stranger. It helped pass the time. No problem. Ed and I have no problem sharing stories with the people we meet. Well, it was a big help. Not every day a damn Brotherhood soldier helps you take your Brahmin for a walk. Think nothing of it. I had some business up here anyways. I keep hearing about these cats in the area. From what I heard, they were extinct. That doesn't seem to be the case. Figured I would take a look for myself, but that is a story for another day. Surely you know that I am Robert Edwin House, President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the new Vegas Strip. I oversaw the city's renovations starting from 2274 onward. The three families are my employees. I've spent too many years waiting for this moment to see it fumbled by an insubordinate contractor. I can't reach through this monitor and compel you to follow instructions, but know this. If you disappoint me, you will pay for it. My army will do what an army does best, defend territory from invaders, and maintain order. A great deal shall be happening, a cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. What you see there will help you understand the significance of what you accomplished at the fort. Thank you for watching the second episode of The Wild Wasteland. If you enjoyed the show, please consider liking the video as it helps the channel and the series a lot. If you are a fan of Fallout and want to see more content like this, think about subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any uploads. I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your continued support allows me to make this type of stuff, and I'm incredibly grateful. I would like to give a special thanks to my biggest supporters, Kim Jong-un, Fireflare, your typical redneck, Mark Train, and Jay of the Jungle. You guys are fantastic, and I couldn't do this without you. 
If you want to see your name in these credits and support the channel more directly, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel links below. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl. Testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust.